Oki Sinatapi, you are uh, tuning in to Native Wellness Institute's uh, Power Hour. So welcome! Woohoo! We got we we're at Macaw Nation, and Macaw Nation has been doing three days of healing. And so Oki Nistu Nidaniko Makoyo Sokoi, I am. Uh, with Jean Tagabon. We've been doing three days of healing. And so we're just, uh, we'd like to welcome you into, we're doing an exercise. And in this exercise, we've just, we have some members of Macaw Nation, which is at the tip of America. Uh, the tip of America, and this is an incredible nation, I'm live, is um, they honor whales. <laughs> they la they last hunted a whale in 1999 and they in were in a hall that was built in September uh, 1955 and it on on the floor and hey there's Jean on on the floor is their creation story they have this incredible creation story in which the thunderbird that blocked out the sun, the thunderbird in a famine where they were starving to death, the thunderbird went out and picked up a whale, picked up a whale and brought it to the people. So good to see you. And so we're just going to ask, Jean, would you, t would you please let us know what you're doing? I, and so um, right now, hey, everybody, it's good to talk. We're talking about men's health, men's wellness. We're talking about the man box here and um, what stepping into the box. But how do we break out of this box and the stereotypes of what society sees what a real man is, to be macho, to be um, independent, or talking about the glory days, to have, uh, you know, uh, seeing women as objects or property or replaceable, um, being, uh, uh, don't be gay, or you know, ego, uh, and don't be like a woman, men don't cry. And we're talking about these here things that are stereotypes in the man box, but how do you break out of the box into the circle, the circle of wellness, and what it really means, and what you want to see in a, in a man. And this is about men's health and men's wellness. And so, with that, what else will we call this circle? Stepping with humbleness. Stepping with humbleness. Yeah. And um, what else? And this, and um, and this here, as far as being a healthy man, is humility. You want that equality within a healthy man? A circle is. So I need your hand to get up. Man's wellness circle. That's a good label for it. Yeah. And so uh, it's all these things. And so when we're talking, and again, breaking out of the box, how can we talk about and communicate and work with men to step out of the box and step into the circle? And you have you have uh, you have several boys around you too, and you're talking about them. And, and as a mom, thought, again, say, I knew I was, I, I thought I knew, but I was wrong. And really talking about that, you know, and and share with them, <coughs> and, and even bring it up, you know, and having open discussions with them, e even when the issue doesn't come up. You know, it's like today, going through and say, hey, I want to tell you, teach with you, tell you something I learned today. It's, it's outside of an a, a event or something that I need to discipline you, I need to or teach you. But it's you just coming up, hey, can, come here, I just want to teach, tell you something that I learned today. And that's how you start to reteach and re retrain. Your Welcome to a live healing session with Native Wellness Institute. Uh, we're at Macaw Nation, and we're, we're all wearing. Welcome back. We're all here at Macaw Nation. It's good to see some of you joining us. Um, I just wanted we uh, we're in a a lively, heated discussion around gender. One of the the focuses today is everybody's wearing red for missing and murdered persons. 
um, and we're in a discussion. We started the healing around gender. And so Jean Tagabon is facilitating um, a discussion on what were we raised with as, and he's calling it the man box. And so we have a diverse group of men and women, of uh, parents, uh, raising, raising children that identify a lot of the pronouns in the group were she, her, uh, he, him. And we've had several parents say that their children have different pronouns, uh, gender fluid, uh, non-binary, um, that they're self-identified. So we're right in the middle. And we just wanted to come to you live to begin to um, talk about healing. And so, uh, so welcome. Uh, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Uh, welcome to, uh, so what I'd like to do is just share some, um, some of the summary that has gone on here. Uh, this is a community that just recently elected um, new people on council. We had a councilman who's been four months on. We have a group who has worked with uh, healing women and keeping um, women sacred. Uh, we The first day, wow, the first day was just so... Uh, Intense with healing subjects. Our first healing subject was um, near-death experiences. And the group, most of the Indian people here, and we're all Native, uh, most of the group here, storytelling was um, what we started to share with each other to help each other farther along our healing journey. And so um, in that near-death experience, it was amazing how many of us were, uh, we had several near-death experiences. So we started, uh, we're just uh, reconnecting in this uh, intense group. So um, a little bit of uh, inspiring words out into stepping away from this group. <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, we just wanted to make sure that we come to you for Wellness Wednesday. Um, and it, uh, the topic here is healing in Macaw Nation. Um, Macaw, um, we understand there's about 1,800 and another thousand that live off the reservation. Uh, I just show you around, uh, we're just showing you around uh, the reservation. Uh, we're at. Um, uh, what is the community hall since 1955? Uh, we're at the very tip uh, across the the ocean. It's a, a little bit of a walk that way. Is British Columbia, and then as you can see, we're surrounded by just beauty, um, natural beauty. We're surrounded by all of the trees. There's blossoms. Uh, at the community center, there's a, a brand new um, play area. Look at this playground. It's just, it's just beautiful. And so we're coming to you live. It's Wellness Wednesday. And why are we here? Um, Macaw Nation has had um, lots of requests over the, oh, maybe like 20 years with Native Wellness Institute. Uh, we were invited here because the community feels they they needed a tune-up <laughs> in wellness and this is our third day so we thought we'd just come live and so I, I'm standing in a spot where there's um, better Wi-Fi which is I guess I could climb the tree <laughs> you know how like you have to get up higher so we just wanted to come for um, this uh, this power hour and just spend some time with you so let me summarize uh i was talking about our first day we focused a lot on prayer uh we had eighth graders from macaw nation um they went and gathered flat cedar and in their community hall we went through uh the eighth graders from Macaw Nation came in um, into the community hall that you see behind us. 
and we went through a ceremony because in their culture the way that they make it a safe space is they put the flat cedar in all of the window sills uh, they put the flat cedar because in this community hall, they asked every member who comes in to uh, leave all leave anything negative or leave your problems at the door and to enter with a good heart and to enter with open ears, uh, open heart. And so that that was how we began. Just uh, Wellness Wednesday, we're just Native Wellness was brought here as facilita facilitators, Jean and I. And there was um, a lot of creation storytelling. Uh, there was a lot. We, we heard stories that this nation um, in the 1700s were visited by the conquistadores. The conquistadores actually had a ship right here on the Pacific Ocean. And they came down into this land right here that you see behind me. And they built a fort. We were told that um, a lot of the smart macaw, they noticed, and the conquistadores had like a cannon. <laughs> and uh, they noticed that it had just a certain range and somehow they got rid of them. <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be awesome? It's really good to hear like tribal stories. So that was like 1700s. And then we heard stories of, man, these are just some incredible passionate um i i don't want uh true grit to live here you have to have true grit and uh when we first arrived for example and i'm just sharing we're just sharing healing there are so many eagles here there were some fishermen that came in and they had a wheelbarrow and maybe with some of the the heads and the so it, when we uh, first arrived Native Wellness Institute here, we are staying in a small cabin. There's wonderful places to stay here. We were surrounded by uh, eagles. Uh, so many um, immature eagles, so many bald eagles. Uh, it was just incredible. Um, the other, so we'll, everybody's been so gracious to us. Last night, they went and got fresh halibut I'm getting a good signal right here. I'm going to climb a tree. <laughs> so we're going to um, keep it short today. I um, On Wellness Wednesday, uh, we've been invited here to Macaw Nation. Um, and here, uh, the Mariposa uh, Wellness Program from Forks, a lot of their, their staff is here. Uh, we also had their drug court. Uh, staff is here and what what's been really cool and that's you know I've chosen to come outside is we we uh, we had a couple of individuals who want to we want to keep confidential so we'll we'll just do the rest of the wellness um, Wednesday out here um, the other thing that happened on the first day is we did a lot of um, asking uh, who are you questions uh, who do you belong to questions? Uh, what makes you macaw? Uh, why do people uh, stay here? And, you know, we, the, the incredible stories that, that were, um, we heard, um, we have uh, a gentleman inside who, you know, uh, a grandma inside that we were saying, this was one of the safest places to grow up. There was um, just a community wholeness, uh, a community uh, love, a community compassion. Maybe a maybe an eagle will fly by. <laughs> I just so and and then things started to change, and so one of the the discussions was you know when the influence from the outside started to come in was when um identity a lot there was a lot of discussion because they're bringing back the language here that we had a lot of language teachers um and uh, some of the language teachers are young they're in their 30s and their 40s um that the macaw language is being brought back 
that the uh, uh, macaw ceremonies uh, were being brought back, um, that that way of life, um, living with the ocean, um, the ocean is just, um, if you could feel what I feel right now, the ocean air is here. Uh, and as uh, we started off, this was in the lower 48 in, in Alaska, of course. So we still have um, some of our relatives who hunt whales. But the last whale was hunted here in the lower 48 with Macaw Nation in 1999. And one of the incredible stories that we heard here, and we're just we're just sharing with you how one nation uplifts themselves, how one nation um, brings back a good way of living, how one nation um, prepares for the next 50 years. And that's what this group um, has been focusing on. Yesterday was they looked at what broke apart the Macaw world, but what would put it back together in the next 50 years. And a lot of um, the what they said, like they were just saying that in the next 50 years, they want to make sure there's an avenue, first of all, that everyone could get clean and sober. There's a big concentration right now to um, stop the overdoses. There's a big concentration to uh, have a drug court where they're just not locking people up. They're giving you an M an avenue by which to uh, regain themselves. Uh, there's a big um, effort to um, have what they called safety nets. Safety nets for a good place to live. Uh, safety nets for being surrounded by those who um, not only um, uh, embrace your sobriety and your recovery, but that you're surrounded by individuals who um, laugh with you, play with you. Uh, this group, uh, we're going to, um, uh, everybody's wearing red today because they're planning for a big uh, community wide walk on Friday here. And then this group, uh, some of them are going to Seattle for the big walk in Seattle for uh, missing and murdered. And so that's, you know, we're all wearing red. Um, we're all bringing all of our symbolism here. Uh, the, our first and second day was storytelling about missing and murdered in our families. We had a lot of tears. We even had tears today. Uh, tears today about family members that we still haven't found here. And uh, the majority of them are women, but there's also the stories of, of young men that disappeared. And so we're, we're hearing these stories because one of the healing um, subjects and the healing processes over this past two and a half days has been around grief and loss. And how do we handle grief? How do we handle loss? Uh, how do we uh, still, still carry on in our everyday lives um, with um, a, a relative that when you we may have lost to COVID. Uh, yesterday, one of our, our friends, our, I won't mention names, but um, she walked, we walked the land here. We went out to the ocean. Uh, we, it was a walking healing. So the whole group, we went for a walk. And one, um, one of the testimonies was uh, helping her 97-year-old mother gracefully over the past 10 years um, come to the end of her life and in, in her last breath and how beautiful it was and how uh, sh she had chosen to put her her career and her life on pause and just help her her mom um, to that place with the family's help with everybody's help and how uh, so so then the rest of the group started talking about this is who I lost. And then they would tell the story of who they lost during the pandemic. Um, then we had others tell the story of who they lost um, to overdose. Uh, we, we did a lot of, there was a lot of tears. Um, we did a lot of letting go. And so one of the things that the group has chosen to do since the very beginning <laughs> is they've been making medicine ties. And now we've chosen the color red. Um, individuals here have brought medicine from this area, um, and then uh, people have brought, you know, sage, uh, a lot of cedar, 
Um, there's um, uh, Jean and I brought some of our medicines from our homeland and we've been making medicine ties. We uh, have tobacco. And so we're making all those red medicine ties with the intention of bringing healing to Macaw Nation. With the intention of uplifting our hearts with um, not carrying any more secrets. Uh, there's been a, just a, an incredible um, testimony of um, sharing stories where um, they've never shared that st story before. There's just been an incredible amount of... Uh, we brought uh, one of the medicines is uh, bear grease, our, our bear fat. And so the, the red um, pieces of cloth, they've, they've taken uh, because they believe also in the strength of the bear that that's the medicine. So they take a little bit of the bear fat and the bear grease and they rub it on the red square um, uh, to make the medicine tie and, and invite the power of the bear, the kayo, the boxikwe, um, in, in our language, to be with that person. And so it's just, but the, we have like three-year-olds. <laughs> One of the three-year-olds, uh, it was just so beautiful on that first day. We were making... Um, medicine ties and her, her mom had finished they were making one for grandma and the mom said i'm not quite sure how i should pray so the three-year-old she goes i'll pray <laughs> she said i'll pray and then she so she put her head down and she had the the medicine tie and she goes please help my grandma Voila, the prayer was done. And so they tied it off and they took it to her night before last. Um, so we're coming to you live, Native Wellness Institute. It is Wellness Wednesday. I'm standing on a fence post because we get good Wi-Fi right here. <laughs> like, we're, we're, and, uh, so I'm just going to stay put because when, I, when we seem to walk, um, we lose um, the Wi-Fi. Um, so, so I wanted to... Um, uh, ask you a couple of questions i see you can you can comment but they're just questions of you know in 2023 here we are entering into springtime here we are entering into um here they have the macaw days in august uh, they do a lot of their ceremony then here there there are some individuals who who sweat there are some individuals who have meetings, support meetings. They're, um, they're, as I said, what was beautiful is that some of the tribal council, a 28 year old uh, tribal council member came here because he wanted to listen. He wanted to see what the community wanted to plan during his, his election while well, he was seated on council. And it that was good. And it was good in the sense that, you know, um, everybody had already been preparing for a couple of days. So they they had drawn out and mapped out what they thought were some of the solutions, you know, uh, the solution, especially around the young people. It was uh, and, you know, you know, Indians, ooh, Indians, you know, we're always into the sports. It was supporting the kids. Uh, it, it, it was um, being with them to make sure that they're surrounded by uh, healthy adults uh, who are clean and sober or who choose not to, who just choose to be there and making it good for them to, all of the youth here to be in activities where they're surrounded, not only by um, the safety, but by the language, uh, by the culture, by the songs. Um, we had um, an elder come down from Vancouver on one of the islands there. He's 81 years old. He's been with us in the entire time. And so it's been really um, beautiful. Him with the grandmothers, they're like here on hand, uh, surrounded by this, this uh, wisdom where you could just sit with them, eat with them, and ask them questions. It's kind of, it's kind of cool because it's like we've setting up some sa safety around ask an elder any question 
<laughs> they don't have to be serious sometimes, but just to um, talk about uh, some people uh, hadn't gotten their their native name yet. Uh, when can they get their Maka name? You know, when uh, what kind of ceremony needs to be involved in that? They also um, had a lot of questions around, you know, sir, uh, how was it surviving here? You know, before we had all these um, electricity, before we had all of this this new modern inventions. Um, so our walk yesterday, there was a lot of stories of around, um, again, that Thunderbird. You see it. Uh, on all the logos here, you see it on all everything, all the artwork here. That Thunderbird and that came and saved uh, in a famine, saved from starvation. Hey, Will, awesome! <laughs> I just saw Will's name, and that was so beautiful because there, um, there's a Frank Smith, an artist in 1955 on the floor of the community center that you see over here and how we started this power hour had drawn that thunderbird and this was this was the incredible um we have language speakers here and they were explaining that that thunderbird had um a belt made out of lightning that it, the Thunderbird was that lightning was belted around and that it um, there was like sea uh, uh, medicine, sea urchins our sea. And last night we were listening to stories in which, you know, they were describing that there was, you know, water animals that were sacred and water animals that they weren't harmful, that they listened and that they, they brought many things like the food source to Macaw people. Not only the whale, but um, uh, it's just like last night here, you know, some of us, we, you know, we might get our stuff at Costco, eh? But then that's cool. But a lot of, um, it, it's just uh, the highest reverence you could give here is to get fresh halibut. <laughs> You bring it to an elder, and I tell you, last last evening when they went and got fresh halibut and fed us, and they went um, out, um, our host, um, Natalie, went and gathered nettles, and they said they make nettles pesto. Uh, they went and uh, got avocados. They went and got fresh tomatoes. They went and got uh, fresh greens. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful meal. And then she was trying to apologize. She said, we don't have any white potatoes or we don't have any white bread. And then me and G were like, that's okay. We don't eat that. <laughs> it was like, it was like we were having this, I guess, organic macaw cuisine and and then we sat there for like three hours just sharing stories just sharing stories um uh some of the family came in and was like saying what's native wellness institute so gene and i got to tell some of our history but more so their stories um more so uh what it's like uh, the family that we were with it was just so cool because they live way up on this hill where you got to have a <laughs> like a four-wheel drive to get up there so not everyone could get up there and as uh, it, it was interesting because when we got up there um she said over there is um my, my younger sister over there is my older sister over there is my dad's house and and so in other words you know your whole clan is like living where you're at and it was just so beautiful because they were they said oh yeah there's 17 grandkids running around here <laughs> and, and the beauty you know as they were um they came and ate we all sat down on the table and they said their ritual at the the table is a prayer is said and then everybody goes around and tells about the best thing that happened to them that day so that so that uh so we started listening to what was the best thing that happened to you this day and it was um you know all, <laughs> it was it was so fun because then the younger ones they have a game in the neighborhood 
where they go trick or treat. So every <laughs> so everybody went and made a costume, put on old costumes, and then they go rent to the houses. And they say trick or treat, and they're given stuff, and then they come back and show you what they got. Uh, I just remember one of the parents said, "What? You got a diet Pepsi in your trick or treat bag?" Uh, and it was like, well, "What did you get?" There was just, uh, it was just fun family time. It was just uh, compassionate, loving. Uh, listening to younger people, uh, it, it, listening to them and listening to what they had to say. It was good family time. So Native Wellness Institute, we're just coming to you live for Wellness Wednesday, uh, Macaw Nation. And I was we've been here. This is our third day. Um, I have to go back inside in a few minutes. Um, they're providing lunch for us. And of course, you know, I want to have lunch. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> and uh, we're on Pacific time. Uh, I usually come to you on Mountain Time, but uh, uh, I want, I'm trying to. I'm just searching my thinking and my spirit right now. Uh, one of the we had one of our uh, we would call um, our biker men. He's just he said he had a couple years sobriety. He um, just learned to ride a motorcycle, so he's been coming in and his motorcycle. Uh, he's back for the third day. Uh, we had a, a young 13-year-old. It was just uh, this 13-year-old, this young uh, native man yesterday. He he just came in. He goes, yeah. He goes, I don't care what's going on in this community center. I they And the elders started saying, no matter what, he helps in the kitchen. He goes in and says, how can I help? Starts chopping up, starts contributing. And uh, But I we just loved his energy because he said, yeah, I'm always looking for a job. <laughs> He goes, I like to be paid cash, but I'm always looking for a job. And so I just go out and say, how can I help? And it, he said, because I'm saving up. And he had this whole plan. He said, if he said, uh, if I can save up this much money by this much time, that's my goal. And so he said, I just go out into the community and say, how can I help? He said, sometimes I get paid. Sometimes I don't. But he said, I don't stop. I just go out in the community and say, how can I help? I thought, wow, what what a great life <laughs> to go out in the community and say how can i help you know how can i help you how can i i be with you um we um i mean i'm just i'm i'm elated um oh yeah i just wanted to share with you today is my 35th birthday i've been sober for 35 years Yahoo! La, 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 la. <laughs> so so that um my energy is is up my energy is good. My energy is strong. And I see uh, Brother Gene, Brother Gene walking this way. We can only get like a, a Wi-Fi signal right about here. Anyway, he's picking some stuff. He'll come over and join. Uh, but I'm celebrating 35 years of sobriety today. Yeah, it. Uh, if we go other, it drops the signal. So I was just sharing with them uh, the summary of the past couple of days and and uh, we'll let him let him uh, chew a little bit of his uh, cookie. But uh, you know, uh, Uncle Gene and I, we were just celebrating and embracing uh, this gift and this blessing to come here. So I'll, um, I'll ask you, Gene, how do you want to describe what we're doing here in our um, remaining um, minutes that we have? Hey everybody, it's really good to be here, and um, and what we're doing here in um, in Macaw right now is we're just uh, um, being open conduit to conduit vessels of wellness and healing. It's about being able to listen to the people, listen to and driving through the community and asking the questions. It's not like we're going in there saying, "Hey, this is what you have to do," but asking like, "What is it that?" What 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 do you want to know? What do you what are your needs? It's about being open and um, because we're not the experts, we're just we just you know. But um, how can we guide the people into uh, healing for their community? You know, and so that's uh, how I a little bit what we see, what we're doing, and and, and plus it's you know it's like uh, one thing I want to say is that hey everybody out there, is I'm really grateful to my teachers 
Because Pete and I were talking about this morning that we're blessed to be doing what we're doing. But along the line, our, there's somebody along my, my path, my teachers who, who saw that, um, saw something in me that I didn't see. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that they took the time for me. And that's what all we're doing. We're just taking the time for others now. You know, and, but for you to take the time as well. Just take that moment, that time. And so, uh, so Will Penn, Kiora. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's really good to be here. I was just talking about men, men's healing and wellness out yeah, there. Yeah, tell us more. So, what, what was going on? And so we're talking about the stereotypes of what it means to really be a, a real man. You know, it's like, uh, got to have the big truck, got to be macho, got to be a hunter, got to be athletic, you know, and you see women as objects uh, um, of just objectification of, of women, you see women as property, you know, and, and see women as replaceable. And that's, and, and that um, men, we have our, we're, um, we know, don't, don't be gay, don't ask for help, you know, and so there's these stereotypes that, of that men, we fall into this box. And then from the box, it was like, how do you step out of the box and step into the circle? And the circle are, are more of those, those wellness circles. It's, it's like being compassionate, being loving, you know, and being able to express your emotions. We don't want men to go out there. We're not going to go out there and start crying and blubbering. I mean, sometimes I cry a lot, but it's just about knowing our emotions other than just being angry or being happy. But there's so many uh, ranges of emotions Be, about being courageous and vulnerable, about being... Um, um, intimate, mm. intimacy, you know, and and so what are are in those? What's in that circle, the wellness circle for men, and about how can men heal? Because it's um, one of those things too. We're going on MMIW here this this you know tomorrow or this Friday. There's a gatherings this all weekend long, and I got into this work about healing of men is because the greatest threat to the wellness and health of, of women are men. Men. And so with this MMIW, the, the, is, is that is, men, we gotta get involved. Men, we gotta be active in the healing and, and the wellness and the safety of women, LGBTQ relatives, the children and the land and each other. So that's a little bit of what we're talking about. Thanks, hey everybody, thanks. As you can see, Gene, um, uh, Gene and I were we're just uh, at a lunch. This is well, welcome to Wellness Wednesday, and we just wanted to come live because the Macaw Nation is incredible. Uh, they've they've brought um, their elders. They brought their you know, like I said, the three year old, um, and those eighth graders that they brought on the first day. They they brought their medicine and they had gone out and it was it's a long tradition here. They go out and they got all the flat cedar and it was just so incredible because it was just like they were old souls, like they were they were uh they had that spirit, they brought in the flat cedar. And me and Gene, you know, like we were going over and just taking a little piece and going, Oh my god, this smells so good. Oh my god, you could feel the the goodness of it. And they went gently around the room and they put it in all the windowsills so that uh, the space in which we were in was safe space, that the space was uh, protected. The, and then they put some by the door, the, all the entrances. And they said this at Macon Nation, that's how they always had made the safety was with the flat cedar. And so, you know, Native Wellness Institute, we're always we're always asking you to share about your medicines. What is your medicine? What helps your spirit? Uh, what what do you go out and gather? And God, it's just springtime. Like, I'm sitting up here, and we're here. Um, I guess I'm standing on a post. I couldn't climb a tree, Gene, because it kept, the, we lost the signal in there. And so, I, it's, so we're just staying right here. So, I am, in my 35 years of being sober, I guess I would say to you, just do one day at a time. We relearned that in the pandemic. Just do one day at a time. Just live that day good the best you can with your best intentions. I'm going to ask Brother Gene just to give his... his. Hey, thanks for coming by for just that moment. Good to meet you, brother. Awesome. Hey. Awesome. And... 
and stick by people who are like like minded. You know, I I try to hang with people who are clean and sober. I try to welcome in um, those that are suffering. They're the most important one in the room. Um, but I'm just like elated. I'm just like woohoo! So so in our closing comments, Jean, is there anything else you want to say to our audience out there, at Native Wellness Institute land? Because uh, what are you thinking, Jean? All I just want to say is, everybody, you know, just take care of your spirits. Be gentle with yourself, you know, and be learners and teach. Be learners and being teachable, you know. And and if you don't know, then you don't know. But uh, um, but sometimes we we think we know, but we were wrong. Mm-hmm. And just the humility of just being able to say, hey, um, I'm trying to learn better. I'm trying to be a better person. I'm trying to be a better human being, be a better man, be a better. I'm trying to be a better husband, an uncle, you know, and, and all these things. And, and so, um, yeah, just continue out there. And, uh, and let's create a world in which we want to belong. Mm-hmm. Let's all create a world in which we want to belong. Mm-hmm. And so with that, thank you. Mm-hmm. Peace out. So with that, we'll, we'll sign off, you know, uh, Uncle Gene and uh, Badass Auntie will try to be here every Wednesday. Some of our other team might come on. Uh, We've been here since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, We've always come to you just to uplift and to share. So we just wanted to, there's so much goodness here at Macaw, share some of that goodness with you. But we'll say, uh, kitakito matsuno, and, you know, send out a prayer this way because there's a lot of Indians, you know, like Indians here. And they're real Indians. They're just like being Indian. So we got to go back in and uh, do some lunch. And so we'll say, Kitaki to Matsuno and Kitsikako. And we love you very much.